Hi, everyone. I am Cindy Barron, and I am sitting in for Eric Rhodes, who is on an amazing art trip, and uh, you'll hear a little bit about it probably today. But um, today I want to introduce uh, a friend, another New England artist, and somebody that I admire very, very much, very talented, and his name is Harley Bartlett. So um, I, you're going to enjoy this one. Harley is... Um, He's a master at everything. So um, he's a past president and president of the most oldest art groups in the country. And uh, he has really revitalized the New England area. And so I hope you enjoy this one. Stay tuned. And let's introduce Harley. Greetings, everybody. Cindy, hey, good Harley. To see you. Hi. <laughs> good to see you. Welcome to my studio. Are you getting snow on the East Coast yet? No, it is a bit brisk outside, though. Oh, well, it's that time of year. <laughs> it is. Oh, so it's good to it's good to see you, Harley. I'm on in California right now. I'll be back on the East Coast soon. But um, uh, like I told everybody, I when I first moved to Rhode Island, um, everybody said you got to meet Harley, and I went okay. Um, you know, I I, I looked up all the. Um, the artists and um, you were one of them and that was 23 years ago. Long so here we are, no friends. <laughs> so, but um, uh, besides, you know, and I want everybody to know you can go to Harley Bartlett, um, but look up bartlettfineart.com and you can see all his amazing work. Harley does murals. Um, you can go to some of these beautiful cathedrals and see Harley's work behind are in the altar around the whole church. And um, he's uh, very well educated in the fine arts. And this is what we want. And I love it. And he's going to show us something. What will you talk about today, Harley? Well, Cindy, um, one of the things, those of us who get outside and paint plein air, especially in the leafless season, autumn, winter, early spring, we're kind of, you know, the biggest challenges how do I paint those darn trees without leaves in front of the sky? And, and a lot of times when I go up on trips and we sit around the table before dinner and we're having a drink, you know, it, everybody's like, geez, yeah, what do you do? Do you paint every little branch? Do you paint a big broad section of it? So now what's interesting is, of course, we all see paintings from history. Aldro Hibbert, Emil Gruppi, Willard Metcalf. And they make it look seemingly easy and, and, you know, that's the problem. Making it look easy, turns out, is incredibly hard. And that's why you're here today to see me make some attempts on a painting that I started three weeks ago up in Vermont. It was a morning painting. And these typically, because the light changes, um, I'll work two to three hours. On, in this case, uh, it's a 16 by 20. And then I intend to bring it in the studio and make, you know, finish it up. And that's where we are with this painting. Um, a photograph will be put up on the screen so you can also take a look at some of the choices I made when I laid the painting in. And you can make comparative um, notes as far as, oh, you know, what did he do here? What did he do there? And then I'm going to explain three approaches that I think work when developing that tree up against the sky. That is so that is so wise and so educational for all of us because it's hard. It's not that easy. It's very hard. You know, the one approach can be just, and I'll explain it when I start, uh, without medium and just directly in painting again, like we do, like I did when I, you know, laid in the painting. Another is I'll bring a medium in and um, I will use that um, to oil out the surface and then, you, you know, work with the local color. The other, the last will be where I actually put some color into the mix, into that when I oil out. And we'll look at some of the differences, advantages, disadvantages of, of any of those approaches. Not to say you can't combine all those when you're doing a painting. Um, we have, we have rules, not rules, but we have principles and approaches. Right. And um, that's what we want to focus on, especially today. Right. Well, you get set up. Give me about a minute and we're coming right back to you. Looking forward to it. Okay. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. 
So today's prize is a one-year subscription to Plain Air Magazine. To win, tell us in the comments where you are watching from. Important. Last show's winner is Cindy Wilson from St. Louis. Woohoo, another Midwesterner. Uh, she won an easel brush clip. So email um, ALS at streamlinedpublishing.com and uh, to claim your prize. So congratulations. Also, a gift from today's download is our free ebook, 97 Incredible Art Secrets. Though, these are good. You know, those, those you want. So um, just do uh, it, the emailing is right underneath 97artsecrets.com slash free. So um, let's get going. Let's go back to Harley. And um, hey, Harley, we're back. Hey. Hi, gang. <laughs> Let me make an adjustment here. So, All right. That looks pretty good. Yeah. We, everybody can see it, I hope. Yes, I think I, I will let you know because I, okay. I get to see it as everybody else is seeing it. So, um, all right. Can see it. Before so I started, in, go ahead, go Cindy. Ahead. This you started in Vermont. That's correct. Um, and and it was uh, East Fairfield. We drive around and we find places to paint. We, in this case, always ask the owner um, if you can paint on their property. This happened to be a barn on the side of the house, and we had to go around the back of the house. The main objective actually is behind, and I did another painting, her yard overlooks a wonderful covered bridge. Oh, but nice. when I turned the corner, I saw this barn. I thought, well, I got to paint nice. the barn too. So the barn was the morning picture. Once the light shifted, I turned around and brought another canvas up and I did a painting of the covered bridge and the river, which was terrific. Oh my gosh, for anybody that doesn't live on the East Coast, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, wonderful places to paint i'm not leaving out anybody in the northeast it's all great places <laughs> to paint <laughs> so one thing i want to show as we're getting started gang um i have some paintings within arm's reach of of sort of an idea of where i'm going okay here's a painting that i Love started it. like the other one in the field and then i developed it in the studio and in particular I want you to put, look at this portion of the painting. Here, I'll bring it a little closer to the camera. All right. That's good. Yeah. And you can see, I'll lower it. So you can see, compared to the barn painting, there's a little bit more of a finished sense. You know, there's a little more development. It's very subtle. And that's part of the trick here. It's, and it's what kind of brushes am I using to get some of the harder strikes? What brushes am I using to soften things? Um, it's a never ending battle. And Love. I mentioned to Cindy earlier, here's a painting that it's been around in the studio for a couple of years, hasn't sold yet. So I happen now to be looking at these trees with a more critical eye. And I'm realizing, by gosh, I've gotten better at this over the last few years. I'm gonna have to jump back in and do something about these trees. Um, and that is the problem with what we do. To those of you in this field, it never gets easier because as you get better, your expectations go higher. Oh my gosh, you said that so perfectly. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah, we always say, "When's it going to get easy?" Never. <laughs> well, so, for all the viewers to know, Harley is is a master plein air painter. So you know he loves being in the field and taking it back to his his studio. It's so important. So it's um he does it all. And what's important to know also is um, I certainly take a photograph of the scene. Um, and, and at times, now this painting in particular with the barn, I could, I could finish it up without looking at the photographic reference because I know what I intend to do. Sometimes there might be an assemblage of buildings or here's a lay-in where I may need from the photograph a little more information um, that I didn't get into the initial lay-in. Um, and so... But the important thing to remember for all of us is the intent at the end of the day for me is I don't want the painting to appear photographic in nature. And this is a this is a danger if you overly, you know, if you rely on photographs too much or you work exclusively from photographs, because what's going to happen is you're going to tend to make your marks look like what the photograph is get, giving you. Why? Right. Because, yeah, you're in the comfort of your studio. You've got your coffee next to you. The heat's on. So when I'm out here in the field, like you can see down in the garden, I'm making marks that are just good enough. 
They're giving me just the right amount of information, and then I move on. And the end result is I tend to get the whole painting in focus, and I get all the big stuff worked out, and the details don't consume me. They're just there enough to say that's a window, that's a door. You know, the, the, there's some barn siding. Now, my job as I work to finish the, this painting is to maintain that integrity um, of the brushwork. Uh, here's another one started. Actually, oh, I love it, that. It, this is in Essex. Now, this one, it was a demo. And what I realized was I, everybody sees us getting to the first hour. And, you know, so I, what I did, I took a picture, came back in the studio, blocked it all in, and then from there finished because I thought, you know, they're more interested to see how I make resolutions with the paint buildup. You right. know, we all, and that, that's, um, that's an important thing, meaning all to get here takes about, like I say, two or three hours, but it's this next step, all of this stuff that I'm going right. to be bringing to this. That's what we really want to see. Right, right, right. Good info. So what I'll do to start is I've, I've made on my palette. Let's see. Okay, right. I, made, I pre mixed some things that I thought would be helpful as I um, dive into the tree. Okay, I didn't want you all to be sitting there while I'm mixing and fumbling away. So, are you a lefty, righty? I am a lefty. You're a lefty. Okay. Yep. So, all right, perfect. Now. Yep. So, what I'm just going to do here, and all I've done is now this initial painting um, is paint and then turpentine to, to cut the paint. That's it, no uh -huh. medium. That's what I'm doing right now as well. Um, I'm just using some turpentine to get the right viscosity. And I'm just going to kind of come in and re-strike some of the areas where the branches all congregate. And I'm just, I'm not painting each individual branch. I'm just making some big general shapes. And then what I'm going to do one of the things that I saw in the field, um, we had, the sky was somewhat partly overcast. So we had some undersides of clouds, which had a nice sort of violet. And I just left the white of the canvas um, where I saw the clouds receiving light. One of the things I'll do as I build the painting up is to bring some warmth to that. I've added just a little yellow ochre to the sky mix. Now what I'm probably gonna do is bring some of these strokes down in between the larger branches. And then I'll probably, I'll spool around and start making some marks for variety's sake inside what I just painted, okay? And already, Harley, that is separating, it's giving it that see-through branch look. Yes. And that, that, that's my If objective. that was good English. <laughs> <laughs> that's my objective. Um, and now what, I'll, I'll try to be careful, but I may lose some of my marks. I don't want to be too precious. Um, and of course, for the sake of the video, I'm painting in a convoluted way that, no, I don't want, you know, otherwise you'd be looking at my shoulders in the back of my head, right? Right. So um, I'm making some marks that I think are going to work for me. Now, were I not doing a demo, I'd probably take something up to this level and work across the whole picture, bring it up to a certain level. And by virtue of that, then, that allows this paint to set a little bit. It, mm -hmm. it gets a, a little bit gummy. Um, but for today, we're going to, we'll push it a little bit because we don't want to have to wait too long. But what I'll do is take, I've got this, this is just a small badger hair bristle. It's a softening brush. And I'll knock some of the edges, push some of the paint around until I'm somewhat satisfied. And actually, I'm going to go for a bristle because I'm finding this is a little too weak. It's not pushing the paint. So like every artist, we have a million brushes. That's right. It's, and, and I tell students, I was just telling them yesterday, um, 
it's like you're a finished carpenter and when you're building cabinet work and you don't use the same hammer of course they don't use hammers anymore they use pneumatics but the point is you're not going to use a framing hammer to build cabinets such as it is with painting I'm, i'll start generally with larger brushes and i'll progressively work towards softer brushes and then i have specific tools um this brush here okay yes. it's, it comes to a point this is a rigger yes and these are very useful in laying branches in and that sort of thing and yet it's astounding to me how some people don't and yesterday was my point i had a student doing a wonderful painting and um what was happening was as she was getting down into some areas with delicate shadows she didn't have any kind of brush that would would do that. So I, I said, you know, now what I do when I'm teaching, I paint alongside the students so they can see. I don't do a demo per se, but I do a painting. That way I can drag them over and show them some of the things that I'm working on and I'm doing. And so I showed her the rigor brush. I said, you need this tool in your kit um, because there's no way with a brus bristle brush you're going to get what you need as far as a mark. Right. Now, see, I love what you're doing right now because you I, I call it negative spacing or negative yeah. things are going backwards. There's so many um, uh, th things you could say for this. But I love how you're creating all those spaces just by going into the shapes you already have. That's right. And, you know, in the 30s, I think it particularly in the 30s, a lot of artists really stylized that and you can see terrific examples. Mm -hmm. um, and, and actually some of the Western artists now are, are picking that up in that, you know, that, that style, a lot of the cowboy painters, there's some mm -hmm. terrific stylization going on um, in their cloudscapes, but also how they're designing um, the, 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 the negative spaces become so important um, in a two-dimensional patterning. Absolutely. Now, one thing here I want to show you, I'm going to show you some things I may not do, but some people do. For example, um, I'm going to adjust a mix here. I need a little alizarin crimson. Okay, it might be too red, but I want, I'm more interested in the value. Sometimes you'll see the artists will overstate the value and I'm not doing this as well as I want right now, but I'm trying to show they'll, they'll kind of do this. Mm -hmm. All right. And it, it, they can balance that meaning sometimes when you do that in your painting, it's, it's creating a very stylistic direction. I tend not to do that, but I see it. I appreciate it. And like any artist at the time, I thought maybe I should try that. Well, it's, Part of the art language is not, it's not what I'm interested in. And that's the beauty of what we do. The variety of- Oh marks. my gosh, it, it, it's absolutely. Without all of this, this you, Diane, who is uh, yesterday and everybody else, all the other artists, without sharing all these ideas, you, you wouldn't know. I mean, you that's wouldn't right. know. This is what we're here for. And And- you know, it is fantastic because the only way you would have gotten this 40 years and earlier was to actually study with an artist who was doing it. And that, that works. Mm -hmm. But here, through video streaming, we can bring it to everybody. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to bring a rigger up just again to um, move things along. And I'm I love those rigger brushes. I have them for both watercolor and oils. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're so essential. They are. And so I'm going to restrike. Now, one of the things with this technique, it's a little drier. Like there isn't, it's not wet with medium. So I'll try to take advantage of the drag, but um, that, because what I don't want is a solid, heavy line. Okay. Right. right. So I'll delicately, and a lot of times I'll even start with a lighter value. Let's go there right now. So I'll come up in here. Now, the, the other thing that's real, that you need to pay attention to, and I think I, 
I've gotten it in the earliest stages is the character of the branches of the tree. Um, they dance in the sky in a way they grow. You know, you want you want to make them um, you want them to undulate as they do in nature. And that's yes. you want to pay attention to that. So you don't have just a bunch of straight sticks, you know, moving right. through the sky. Right. The one thing you don't want is like your fingers all per you're perfectly aligned. And um, it's, yes, it makes it look more natural when you can. Um, everything's broken up and changed. Yeah, there's variety that there's feels variety. natural. Now, one thing I can do if, if let's I'm just seeing. OK, I've mm -hmm. got a dark value it here. I can certainly come in and what I would typically do is wait, but I'll lay over it a lighter value. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, depending on what's going on, um, say there's dappled light, I might even play with the temperature of that. And, or in this day that it, it was, I, I don't know, it wasn't full blown sun. It was partly cloudy. So I'm probably not going to play up the light. But let's just say there was a hard light. I could hear come in here. Let's let's make a mix of this. Okay. A little yellow ochre. Um, I might be a little off color wise, but we don't care. This is a demo. All right. So I might come in with some warmer right, right, right. values, right, to suggest that light is hitting this tree. And then right. I can, you know, as things move along, um, I could perhaps, you know, really pop some areas. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. This is something George Innes, I, I love his paintings where he has the branches wending their way, especially in an autumn picture. And typically his are filled with leaves, which is great. But he'll have the trunks just catching light through it. And this time of the year, especially if you're driving through the rural part of Connecticut and the sun is low in the sky, my gosh, George Innes is everywhere. And it's, you have to be careful because you might drive off the road because you're yeah, so I know. looking at Yeah, I know. <laughs> Every artist would have a sign in the back of their car. Yes, saying, right. I'm Caution, an artist. Caution, artist driving. Yeah, be wary of, of sudden stops. <laughs> so I'm just, before we move on to another, um, I'm looking at the clock. How much... Because I want to make sure I have enough time for the other two portions. Um, oh, you're doing good. Okay. You're doing good. So in here, again, I could perhaps get a little more specific with, we'll call them the sky holes or the, you know, yes. where the, and, and again, I'm thinking of the direction, meaning that the branches are flowing out. Um, I also want to be, um, there's two things that are going on here. And I think sometimes people conflate the two words or they they mix them up meaning there's composition which is where did i put the barn where am i putting the trees how am i fitting them in in this 16 by 20 canvas then there's design yes so i have an individual tree i've composed it but i have to design that i have to be considerate of undulations much like when we paint cloudscapes or anything natural. So I want to make sure I don't get a lollipop tree, you know, just one big dome. Um, and as you guys can see down on your screen, the tree that I worked from, it, the, the photograph, sometimes maybe I even have to fix what I'm seeing realistically. Maybe that's not good enough. And I need I, to make That was it. important to say. Yeah. Um, what you just told the view, viewers, all of that is important to say. I, I call it bumps in the road or whatever. Just don't make something um, straight or the right. same thing. But that is so, what you said was so important for viewers to know. And also, look at the amount of work that that you're putting into that tree right now for us as viewers. And, you know, that is what's going to make it what you want it to be. You know, you're, you're right. spending the time to design um, that tree. Now, what I'm doing right now, Cindy, you can see I'm laying over that initial darker value and I'm taking the rigger and I've made a slightly lighter mix and I'm coming over it. I'm not obliterating. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, it, I'm trying to keep some of what's underneath. So it, it works together and there's a sense of modulation. Right. And this is another thing I think that 
people and and i hear it from people well i was told you have to work with the biggest brush possible and that's true to a point but yet look what i'm having to do to describe this i'm working with a rigor brush mm -hmm. um, and and so you you don't want to build this prejudice against small tools now this is what happens. Oh, you can see my brushes. I got some teeny little yeah. two-year brushes. Well, and, and I think in art education, we'll call it, what happens is you get a lot of thou shalt nots. Yes. And um, there's probably, there's a good reason why um, it, it, beginning artists should work with big brushes because we all tend to focus on the details of the picture. So, you know, you're busy, your tongue is out and you're hunched over and you're painting every little thing, but you're forgetting the whole big picture. Mm -hmm. So that's why it, the stress is, look, take a big tool, you know, make your marks big. And that's, it's, it's, it's effective in the early stages of when you're learning how to draw and paint. But mm -hmm. at some point, there's nothing wrong with learning how to manipulate things with smaller tools. Oh, absolutely. So here I'm just taking, this is a badger, it's just, a, and I'm just, so, I'm knocking back some of the edges. Which is and, softening it up really nicely. Yes. And then the trick is, this is like sugar. You don't want to overdo it because there's an integrity to some of these brush marks that I'm actually getting better at. Um, I used to, you know, I'd get in there and I'd knock everything down and then I'd wonder, well, why is it so boring? Well, I killed the paint. So as we go, you start learning, hey, I, I'm going to leave some of these brush strokes because they're, they're exciting. And, mm -hmm. and it shows the hand of me, the artist, as I was constructing this. And as you get better, you learn where perhaps to leave them, where to take them out. Um, you can only learn that by trying it and making mistakes. And I don't know about you, Cindy, but I have a passel of mistakes that are in the. I'm going to have a big bonfire. Oh my gosh. You know what? I have bins full of especially planar paintings and right. uh, I tell my students, I said, don't get rid of them. I said, your duds is how you learn. That's you right. Know, it, you're not going to learn on your most successful painting if there no. is one, you know, and you said something, Harley, that I really resonate to, you know, as long as we both have been painting, as long as you've been painting and uh, our professional life, you're never done growing. That's You're always right. learning. You know, and um, I find that the, the key to success. Always want to learn, always at, grow. At, you know, Cindy, you just say, and I'll tell you what, I'll give you a little story here. I always painted outdoors, but I was primarily a studio painter. And it wasn't until 2016, um, Stapleton Kearns, a friend of mine, reached out. And he and TM Nicholas used to go up twice a year with a gang of artists. This goes back to the 20s with Aldro Hibbard, Emil Gruppi, and they would paint up in Vermont. And they realized one fall, TM and Stapleton, they were the only ones left. Everybody else had died. And they, they realized, <laughs> if, well, they realized if they didn't do something, it would die with them, this whole endeavor. Right. So they started making calls. I got a call and I thought, yeah, I'd love to do this. And I want to emphasize of you guys. I mean, you guys have a nice bond in. Oh, um, it's, it's fantastic. And so what happened, Cindy, though, is. Yes, I, I'm, I, I've developed my skills. This is like being an athlete. I've developed my skills in other facets of art making. But when I got up there, I started realizing I had so much more to learn and grow with respect to plein air, outdoor painting. And the great thing with this is, um, you, you know, you paint with your friends and, and you see what they do. And you're not copying, but you're seeing the decisions they're making. And you're right. like, oh, I can do that. You know, it's liberating. Right, right. But, you know, it, it's um, um, the growing part. I mean, yesterday I went plein air painting and I knew I yep. only had maybe an, an hour, hour and a half. And I blocked it in real quick. Next thing I know, the sun's gone down and I'm like, well, let me keep working on it. I looked at it this morning and I went, OK, I see some errors, but, um, you know, I'll work with that in the studio today. And like you said earlier, I don't use any reference when I go back into it. Right. If you get enough out in the field, now what you're doing here is, I don't need to look at a tree. Uh, you know, I have my memory and my mm -hmm. experience to make marks. And then I'm trying to make it work as a whole with the painting itself. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually not disliking this at this point, meaning where I, in the quiet of my studio, I think, okay, I'm on the right track. So that's a good sign. 
-hmm. <laughs> but I have a combination of sizes of marks. Um, I brought some paint strokes back into the cloud. So there's a little bit of integrity here with brushwork. Um, uh, you know, again, what I'm, I would probably do at this point, and this is another learning curve. If I feel something is working, I'll stop and I'll take it to other parts of the picture. What I don't want to do is just keep overworking this and then kill it. It's right. like observe what worked, carry that throughout the picture and bring the whole picture up to a certain level. Um, and then you can go back and figure out by then you're going to be able to see, is that enough? Do I need more? But in this instance, I would probably stop because now I'd say, you know what? I have to address the barn and then I have to address this, this field of grass and make it more interesting than it is. So it's, it's an organic process. Um, right. I'm not going to have, I shouldn't have a finished tree here and everything else unfinished. You know, you're bringing it right. all up so you can judge it all as one unit. Right. That was very helpful to say. Um, definitely. Yes. But, you know, it's 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 great to see how you're working that edge of the tree because, you know, you're going back and forth to make it look that wispy look with the sky coming through. And I like that. And I think it's good for the viewers to see. Yeah. I'm going to now just for laughs. Um, work some of the darker parts of the trunk. I've got a rigger again, a different brush. Now, this is another thing. Um, and, and I was giving a crit the other day at Lyme Art Association. And a woman whose work was very nice, she said, she pointed out somebody else's work, and it, which was much more vibrant. And she said, you know, I just feel like my paintings are so dull. So I asked her, I said, when you're working, at the end of your session, do you have a fistful of brushes or just one or two? And she said, well, just one or two. I said, well, that's your problem. You're <laughs> using the, you, if you're using a brush for a specific rich color or dark color, that's the brush, that's the brush that you use for that. You don't wash it out and then take it to the, some lighter color. Because what happens is on your palette, things will start getting muddy because yeah. you're, you're not going to get your brush clean enough. That was great advice you just said. Yeah, and so you should have, not just for the sake of having a fistful of brushes, because you're using specific brushes for specific tasks. And by virtue of that, I'm not going to, this rigor now, I'm not going to now, it's, it's, it's my dark brush. You know what I mean? It's my dark paint brush. Not going to put it into any other mix. So by the t end of this session, like already, just with this little bit we're doing, I've got seven brushes that I've used for different things. Okay. So that's something that you um, don't, don't um, overuse one brush for multiple tasks. I love how that tree is popping out. Yeah. It's, um, it's what's nice is, and I'll have to be careful because this is one of the darkest darks, but I'm not, I'm not hating this, but it's also Cindy, a nice bed um, where a half hour from now, an hour from now, you know, in the working session, this paint will start setting up and I can apply something on top and it'll have a slight tug. You know, it uh -huh. won't, like if I was using linseed oil, it would, it would stay too wet too long, right? right? So I can then start applying marks that might be a little warmer, cool. You know, I can start modifying it. So it's almost like in a watercolor laying down, you know, a dark wash. And if you use like a gouache or body color, watercolor, that you come back in and lay some opaque marks in that to give it variety. Yes. That, that's what this Then it can also do. sort of drags, your brush drags a little bit on it and it leaves nice marks. That's exactly the thing you start looking for. It, it, it lends itself to a high level of interest. Um, you know, it's funny because you can't see it in the camera and I could swing it over, but I have... Um, over here, a Hugh Bolton Jones painting. And um, would you like me to, I'll, I'll try not to be a drunken you know sailor. When we come back, when we come back from our-, our um, I'll show you then. Yeah, and then show me then because I think I'll do a little, um, uh, is this a good time to, um, I love that tree. For me, if, do you want to take a break? Um, is that, this a good time? Let, let me do something and then you can set that up and talk about it. Yeah. And, um, and then we'll come right back. Does that yep. sound good? Just real quick. See how I'm laying some lighter body color, a little cooler down in that dark yeah. and adding chroma to it. So yes. that's the point. 
Okay, yes. yeah, let's go ahead and, and I'll shift the camera over to old Hugh Bolton Jones. Okay, okay. Okay, I hope you're enjoying this. I know I am. And uh, it's that time of year when the leaves fall off the trees and this is a good lesson. Um, so, but um, right now, let me talk about Realism Live. Um, I'm on the faculty along with 20 other amazing artists and it's something um, for everyone. It's perfect if you want to grow your um, artist family and if you want to learn more. There's something to take from everyone. You can have a blast with this. I've done it. I've been on the faculty a couple times and it's um, it's great. You, you, you just gain so much knowledge and have so much fun with it and it's something you can go back to and relate and it's it's um, all on your time, and that's November 9th through the 11th. So let's show a little bit of that. And uh, if uh, you sign up and plug Baron B A R O N in the code, you will get a 10% discount. So let's see about Realism Live. I hope you enjoyed that. Give it some thought because it's coming up. It's only a week away and um, it's something to learn. You will enjoy it. It's um, like I said, you meet so many good people and you build your artist family. More so, you educate yourself on your style and what you want to be as an artist. So I hope you enjoy that. So let's go back to Harley. Hey, Hi, Harley. gang. Oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, this is a painting by Hugh Bolton Jones, an American, New England primarily, uh, landscape painter, late 19th, early 20th century. And um, Steve Matika, who I buy my frames from, no, uh, happens to also sell art. And he had this piece and I couldn't take it away from him fast enough. The reason <laughs> being, Hugh Bolton Jones, here he is. He's doing everything that we're just talking about. So what I have you the just did. Yes. painting here. Yes. It's, you know, and, and one of the things um, about his style is, is I can, uh, there's very, he's made modified brushes, especially down in the grasses and or maybe up where there's still some leaves left on the trees, probably an oak. Um, and, and so he, he, you don't see a brush, traditional brush stroke so much as just some sort of the the, uh, the paintbrush is somewhat of a modified tool and he's making a mark he's not he doesn't want to have every silly little leaf but he wants to have enough marks that you get it the viewer um he's also dragging the, these lines here this the branches 
are all done with a rigor brush. Um, the big thing that I'm looking at is, gee, you know, did he do it when the sky was wet, when it was dry? You know, and as you develop as an artist, you're better are better able to um, make those determinations because of your own experience. Right. And it's all the brush miles that you're putting in to um, what that's, you want to see on canvas. You, you got to right. try it. You got to find out what works for you. That's right. And like I just did in that tree on my painting, Cindy, I can see he did exactly what I did. He laid down a darker first coat and then he came back over it with a very subtle, slightly lighter color. And it, and it gives body and more importantly, variety um, to the, the, the trunk as it's going up. And look at how, look at how naturalistic, it, you know what I mean? His tree. And I sure. love it. Yeah. And you know, he's, he's looking at that tree and picking out the big basic forms. He's not probably giving us every darn little branch, but he's also making sure to have this naturalistic randomness that we see out in nature. He's really pulled it off. And you know what? You said that, right. He's not picking out every branch, but as a viewer, you're looking at it, you're almost seeing a lot of branches. Exactly. And that's you know? that thing that they tell us to do, allow your viewer, don't give your viewer all the information, you know, let their imagination take, that's what's happening here. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I love the coolness in the back to the warmth in the front. It's, it's yes. beautiful. Don't. Yeah, even, I'm just gonna adjust the camera down here in this field. Oh my look gosh, at look all at all that. Textures. Now for oh. me, is, I have this out of the frame because it's a very fancy frame. Um, it's on an easel here. And I study this painting because th now this for me, here I am, I'm 64 years old. I'm still learning. I'm still in graduate mm -hmm. school. I'm mm -hmm. looking at his marks and I'm seeing, I, you know, now I don't want to paint exactly like Hugh Bolton Jones, but by looking at what he's doing, it's giving me information as to what I might do. And it's it's very exciting. So you said it right. You know, I mean, you know, find those artists, you know, the old masters or the new masters or whatever yep. that you gravitate to and study it because you said it right. We're in graduate school still. I love we are. that. <laughs> and the other thing that's as good, and I'll tell you what, the other thing, we live in such a fantastic time where on the internet you can download photographs, very good photographs of paintings. And if you, you, know, you have a good color printer, good photo paper, you can get a reasonable image to study from. Yes. Nothing does beat looking at the real one though. But you know, right. this, this is an investment for me. Um, you know, at some point I'll sell it um, because it's done what I need um, for myself as a growing tool. And right. there's terrific galleries around um, you know, like a Todd Montanero in Rockport's got a gallery where you can you can pick up smaller paintings, even of a Hugh Bolton Jones for a reasonable price. And you can have a small collection that you can study um, how to right. make these marks. It's it's so exciting. Um, and of course, you should buy from us living artists for the same reason. Right. <laughs> right. You, know, you got to find the people that make you sing. It's, it, yeah, it has to make your soul sing and and, and um, speak to you. I, That's you right. Know, Speaking trying to language. come up with the words. But you have to, you know, that's that's um, um, that's what makes life go around. Yeah, that's I mean, right. it's it's what makes you happy. Well, the other thing is, if we all painted the same, what what fun would I mean? You know, the, 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 see, that's the whole interesting thing. For as much, Cindy, you and I could have the same training, all of this, and then we go out in the field. Yet your language is going to be yours alone, as mine is going to be mine alone, and what. Yeah. What they've what's happened in the last hundred years, and, and you guys are picking the ball up here with this this live streaming, is the edu the craft part. You can't yeah. express what you want to express if you don't have the craft. You have to know the drawing, the composing, the paint application, all these and 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 you have to do it a whole bunch of times because as I tell students, you're not gonna win the Boston Marathon if you jog a mile a week, you know, you, you've got to train, you know, and that's what we right. do, train. So it's really miles in. And I tell my grandkids when you know, when I paint with them, they go, well, why can't I do that? And I said, do you think I came out of a box like this? <laughs> you just didn't open up a box and I came right. out like, I said, you know, this is years in the making. And uh, right. it's kind of hard for people to understand that. But, you know, it's um, it, it, just do your passion. That's so in right. the painting you had up, I love this painting. I would love mm -hmm. to see that one in person. Yeah. Um, so 
painting you were working on. Yep. So is there anything else you want to tell the viewer about that? Well, I could move depending on our time. Um, okay, I, you have about, was... oh, I'm going to say about eight minutes. Okay, let me move the um, tripod over to okay. that painting, okay? Okay. And so we're moving it over. And what I, I want to show... Seeing a, I love seeing an artist studio. <laughs> oh, here, real quick. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give you the tour here. Oh, my gosh. So this, now, this is, is a um, genuine artist studio. <laughs> this, is, this is a, a building in, it, we have an eight, 18th century house, 1793. And we've been here 15, more than 15 years. And um, so we did rebuild a barn and carriage shed. And then this building that I'm in was a single story horse barn. And oh. um, it was 30 by 30 feet, single story. And a friend of my, um, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the father of a friend of my daughter's was a contractor. I had him come. We put a second floor and came out 10 feet. So I have um, basically a 30 by 40 uh, set, you know, floor for my art. Now, for those of you who don't know, I also do the more commercial work for restaurants. I work with yes. a garden company with, with Capital Grill, season 52. So in the other room, I'm sometimes doing very large paintings. Uh, and or when I've done work in churches, it's the same thing. I can have large murals. So I have 12 foot ceiling height that I can work with. Uh, and then I have a wall with no obstructions that's about 40 feet wide. And so that that's where on that side, all my commercial work goes. What I just showed you is my fine art studio. And then the little doorway shows the office space that uh, where I have to pay bills and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So we need so, a lot of room. Let me put that, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, so fair we enough. We need a lot of room. room. Well, it, it, the irony is when I had a commercial space, I had 4,000 square feet and I moved. And, you know, when you have 4,000 square feet, <laughs> you can fill it with a lot of stuff. All right. So what I'm doing real quick here, Cindy, is I'm taking some medium. And uh -huh. the medium that I'm using, it's a Neo Megilp from Gamblin. I know that one. Yes. Yes. And what I like about it is it's it's not runny. Um, it tends to be a dryer, um, but it, it also sets up quickly so you can work it. It's not doesn't have a toxic odor to it. Um, so one of the things that I'll do, let's we'll pick this bunch of trees here. Um, I'm just going to oil out. Now you might ask, well, what's oiling out? I'm giving the surface just a little bit of medium. Now the trick with this is not too much medium. If you get right. too much, you're gonna be you're gonna have a mess on your hands. Right. So now I'm gonna take a bristle. And what happens here is the paint, and I'll just give you an example of a stroke. Because of that oiling out, look at there's there, there's no drag like there is right. when it's a drier surface. Right. So um, I can now use that to my advantage. Now that particular stroke is not to my advantage, but for this so in that case, I take my rag. And I just lift some of that paint. And this is that's part of the beauty of working. But that also a, uh, created um, what you needed to, you know, like the see through trees. That's right. That's right. And there's, you know, you can fool around with that application. Um, let's do this. Let's move in and put some sky color in here also. Let's see what. So. What I'm finding, I don't know if it's evident with the camera, the surface is far more wet and it's far easier to throw paint down, but I have to be very careful if I, I can overdo it. Um, and whoops, we're gonna go up with a... So I'm just gonna bring some paint over the top of the branches and it's okay, it's a little darker than I want, but that's all right, because I'll, I'll bring in this light of the cloud later, and I'll talk about that. Actually, while, while, while I have you guys, let me also do this. I'll take another thing to do is medium with some body color, okay? So I'm not just oiling out, but see, I'm adding a thin, transparent, translucent mix. It has medium yeah. and some paint. Yes. So- yeah. yeah. And this, this again, you, you see, I got an effect much quicker than I did over here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you can play this up. Now, the trick is 
whatever medium you're using, don't put too much medium in. And you I, want to make sure you have a certain translucency to the mix. Let me show you. If I'm not careful, um, I'm going to get too, look at how opaque that is. Uh -huh. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that's too much paint. Now I have to fight with that thin layer. It's very thin. But I was much happier when it was translucent because then I can come in with a darker and a lighter mix. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the trick here. I, I, it's, I modified it. Um, just enough. Now, the other advantage of this, too, is if you look, you probably can't see it in the, the um, because I'm using the white of the canvas, I haven't toned the canvas. And where the white shows through, I may or may not want that to go away. So this technique is also a way where I can wash in very thinly and I can just make those holidays, as we call them, right. disappear. And I also now have a, a, oil, a surface that has a little bit of paint and a little bit of medium. I can now paint into that. Let's do that. I can bring, I know this isn't trees, guys, but it's all the same thing. Yeah, but you know what? You brought you brought it all, yeah, you brought it all together. But I like the way you you know, you did the first tree dry and then the next yep. one with that medium. So it, it, it gives everybody a whole lot of information. Yeah, there's, there's I, what I don't want to sell is, oh, there's one approach. Right. I mean, there's a whole, there's a myriad of things. And this is what you as an artist and Cindy, you do it and I do it. We don't come in here with a formula. Well, this is how I'm going to do it. And bang, bang, bang. That We're always growing, modifying, trying new things. And that was one of the things, that's why I wanted to talk about these approaches. I can utilize them in, in it, there may be an advantage of doing it in a certain setting. Um, and, and so having the ability, I call that my toolbox, having that, that, formula in my toolbox like oh okay i'm going to do the dry method that's going to work here and i'll give it a try right uh, or you know yeah i'm going to oil out and then i'll paint into that or i'll make a mix this probably is um this is what i've used the most i'm tending to go towards the drier approach um as i paint more um just because of preference I but you gave to... everybody something to think about, which is important. Okay, right. you got about a minute. What would okay. you like to say to anything um, uh, you'd like to say? I First of all, you got to go to Harley's website. That's Bartlett. Um, Fineart.com. Bartlettfineart.com. And you got to see his work. You know, he's uh, he's he's done a lot of commercial work. He's um, worked for Capital Grill. And um, he's got work all over the place, but he is I, such an accomplished artist. But he's also um, helping all the original art organizations here that we have, the, the, the older ones, like the Rockport Art Association. He is the president, and I'm going to try and get Jerry in next year. Good, yes, you should <laughs> and have then, a problem. Um, uh, but he's been mm -hmm. Sam Magundi, uh, the Providence Art Club. You know, everything I'm saying, he's revitalizing this New England. He's bringing his energy and um, uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. So you got to look at his website and uh, follow him on Facebook and Instagram, too. And, and I might add, Cindy, with this Facebook and Instagram, I'm far more up to date. You know how it is with websites. Oh, gosh. A year, son, two years, three years go by. So check me out on Facebook and Instagram and you will see the most recent work that I've been working on. My my website's more archival and it'll show a good variety, but for the up-to-date work. Uh, and don't hesitate, gang, to friend me. That's oh, I, I'm only interested in art on Facebook and Instagram. That's what it's for. <laughs> and he has a special group of guys, um, artists, that he goes out with every year, uh, all the time, and they, they paint a lot. And you know what? That's something, you know, for your viewers to think about. Get get with some of your art friends. But Harley's got a group I'm very envious of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I we may crash get up there and it one day. <laughs> we had about 40 people last March. It was oh, fantastic. Uh, Jackie Jones, Don Demur came yeah. up. We had the, uh, our usual gang, TM Nicholas, Stapleton Kearns. I mean, there's a, a Tom Adkins, Sergio Raffo, Tom Hughes. It's a good gang. Oh my gosh, it's a great game. I may crash it one time. <laughs> you ought to. Absolutely. I'll bring I'll bring wine, but I may crash. Well, it. we're bourbon and scotch drinkers, but wine. Oh, will pass. I can I can hang. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Harley, this has been a treat.
Thank you so much. And uh, make sure you check out Harley. He's, um, I, I, when I first moved to Rhode Island, I had to look him up, you know, and I was intimidated, but I did it. But anyway, <laughs> Harley, this has been great. And uh, I'll see you on the East Coast soon. Okay, Cindy. Terrific. Thank you. Take care. Okay, you too. So guess what? We're going to find out about Eric. He is uh, sending a video, so let's take it away. Let's find out what Eric has been up to. Where am I? Uh, well, I'm on the beach, the rocky beach of Majorca. It's my last chance to paint here, uh, leaving in the morning for Germany. And I've been painting in this beautiful spot. Uh, see if I can show you the spot. Uh, it's called the Painters, down in the Painters uh, Path. So I've been painting this building and been painting this path are, are these rocks and it's my last chance to paint which i'm disappointed about this is what i've done i've been working in gouache and uh it's a challenge but really enjoying it uh maybe i'll check in again if not i'll see you on realism live which is starting on wednesday i'll be there wow i think i could go paint there well i hope you enjoyed this um He's, 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 you know, it, it was a great day. And, you know, look at trees, you know, the way Harley's looking at trees. You know, we all are here to bring you something to learn. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I certainly did. And I may go painting after this. So have a great day, everybody. And thanks for joining me.